Next up, we're going to talk a bit more about grep and regular expressions. So if I look at the man page for grep and scroll way down, uh, first of all, actually, you're going to see egrep listed up here alongside grep. Egrep is a variant. Uh, it's a separate command, but it also is the same as grep-e, capital E. So grep-e is a variant that provides for extended regular expression syntax. Uh, I could scroll through and show it to you, but I'll just search for the line I'm looking for. Here we are, basic versus extended regular expressions. In basic regular expressions, certain meta characters, question mark, plus, curly braces, parentheses, lose their special meaning. So those are characters that have a special meaning in the regular expression syntax, but currently with what we've seen, we can't use them unless we escape them. But if we use the dash E, uppercase E for extended regular expression syntax, we then can use them. Um, so let's try that. The first example I'll show you is the question mark. So first of all, right now, if I just do a grep question mark from our song of myself file, it matches actual question marks. And maybe that's what we want. But in regular expressions, a question mark actually means match zero or one of the preceding expression. So let me try and show a simple example. Let's say that I want to match, um, how about bird, the string bird. So I can do grep bird inside of, uh, let's do dash W for word. So it has to be the word bird in our song of myself file. All right, so we have mockingbird, humming bird. Those are both considered words because they have non-word characters on either side. Anyway, we haven't seen the question mark yet. If I recall this, and I also want to match the plural birds, which right now we're not matching, and I'm pretty sure birds shows up in this poem at least once. If I wrote birds like that, well, now we don't match bird. So you can see there's what, five total matches that I want. This is where question mark comes in hand. Question mark, if it follows something like it does right here, basically says this S is optional. One or zero S's. So this stuff has to be there, but then one or zero S's. So again, we're kind of diving into regular expressions in a very quick manner. That's uh, not the focus of this course, but you'll see that it doesn't work. It's trying to find a match that is literally birds question mark because we are not using the extended syntax. So I'll come back, I'll just group my options together and add capital E. We now are using the extended regular expression syntax, so it doesn't look for the question mark character, it, it knows what that means as a regular expression character, and it means this S is optional, zero or one S's. So there we are, birds, birds, but also bird, no S birds, no S, birds, yes, S. Uh, so that's one example. Another example are the curly brace characters. In a regular expression, if we have some letter, let's say A, followed by curly braces and then a number in the curly braces, this is saying three A's in a row. So, you, I mean, we could just write that as AAA, but I could also have something like uh, capital A through capital Z, and then put five inside of those curly braces. This quantifies, it sets the number of the preceding uh, expression or preceding character. So anything capitalized, five of them in a row. But I have to use the extended syntax to take advantage of that. Um, so I'm trying to think of a, a simple example here. If we do a grep, um, how about, let's do vowels. So let's try and find two vowels next to each other. So that would be A, E, I, O, or U. That's the set of characters I'm looking for. And I want to find two of them next to each other. I can do curly braces, two. But I do have to make sure that I'm using the extended syntax. And then song of myself. So here we are, two vowels next to one another. Next to one another. Um, I don't know, will we find three? I don't know, are there words that have three vowels? Yeah, okay. There we are, three vowels next to one another. And I can't imagine, I mean, maybe, maybe there are some that have four. Let's see. Nope, so it stops at three. So that meaning of the curly braces 
only works in grep if we use the extended regex syntax. Otherwise, it will try and match an actual, a literal curly brace character. Um, now, we, there's a lot more to this. I could say something like uh, a range of values, anything from two to four vowels. And now we match two in a row, but also somewhere in here, we'll have matched three in a row. There's just too many matches. It will take forever to scroll and, and oh, here we are, three in a row. And then if there were any four in a row, there aren't, they would also be matched. So we can do a, a range that way. And that's just a quick intro to that difference that dash E option provides. It gives us extended syntax. If I get rid of that, we don't have any matches because it's trying to find A, E, I, O, or U, any of those, just one of them. And then this exact set of characters. It's looking for the curly braces, a two, a comma, a four, and so on. It doesn't use the special regex meaning of those characters. All right, so I think that's a okay enough place to stop with uh, the extended syntax. It's not a complete course on regular expressions. It's a pretty big topic and there's a lot that we can do with them, but it's a good sort of surface level understanding and uh, how we can use the dash E option in grep to get that extended syntax.